Welcome back. In this segment, we'll talk about uh, image classification accuracy assessment. Uh, this is a fundamental part of a uh, follow-up component to image classification. And obviously, we want the most accurate uh, image classification out of a particular uh, scene of an image, whether it's Landsat image or it's other uh, aerial photos or Sentinel or uh, some other source. And uh, if we don't document the accuracy, of course, it will, will create a situation where the map that came out of the image is simply just uh, garbage in, garbage out. And the uh, following users who use that map will uh, be very confused uh, in terms of what is what uh, on a image and uh, also what's on the ground. So uh, we will get into the, this exa critical example uh, as we look at the script here. So in this example, this uh, uh, we start from the supervised classification as we show in the previous tutorial. And uh, in this example, we first start uh, from line five to simply line 54. Uh, this is simply I copy pasted from the previous uh, script. So uh, this is a repetition of the supervised classification. And the actual uh, image classification accuracy assessment start code starts from line uh, 60. So uh, this is starting with a study area. So this matches exactly as we, we had before uh, in the supervised classification example. And then on line 67, uh, this is where we are using the NAEP imagery to validate the classification we did with the Landsat image. So uh, just a quick background into this. Uh, you might be asking me why we are using an image that is completely from a different source to track the accuracy of another image, uh, which is the Landsat. And the reason for that is because the uh, Landsat image has a 30 meter pixel size, which is uh, fairly coarse. And uh, we, when we do image classification, uh, accuracy assessment, we have to find a better source uh, that can give us the uh, better image classification uh, accuracy example. So in this case, NAEP imagery are taken by area photos uh, and they are one meter pixel size, which is much finer spatial uh, resolution in this sense. And uh, we use the NAEP imagery in this case to help us to identify better the uh, reference data we are about to construct. So uh, if you are trying to classify NAEP imagery uh, using uh, another example, then you will be using something that is even better than NAEP. Uh, and sometimes you could use NAEP uh, technically if you don't have images that are better than one meter pixel uh, size. And uh, the critical component I want to mention in here is uh, just be sure that you can identify these reference features inside an image that you have. Uh, NAEP, obviously, it is somewhat sufficient, depends on what you are trying to pick out of the image at one meter pixel size. Uh, so uh, just be careful with that uh, aspect of this. And then on line 72, uh, we are simply just displaying the reference image of this NAEP uh, that we picked out of the image collection, and we name it as the reference NAEP uh, image in the layer, as what I'm highlighting there on line 72. 
And then this next uh, point that uh, on line 75, we use this uh, random points to generate a uh, hundred different random points on top of this NIP image for us to uh, generate this reference uh, data. And the reason why I am using the random points uh, is uh, statistically speaking, uh, there are some background into this. Uh, and uh, you can obviously read more into uh, the map accuracy literature to find what this means. Uh, and there are different sampling strategies when you pick, uh, say, for example, if this is an image, we wanted to pick the different pixels out of this. Uh, what there obviously there are different ways that you can pick these pixels. Uh, you can do a random approach, so you can randomly you know, pick these pixel values. And then the other one is you can pick the pixels based on you know, every six pixel, you draw one out of this image. And then the other approach you can do is called a stratified approach. So you previously estimate, say for example, an area on this image uh, is forest. You just pick a bunch of uh, pixels out of that area and then you pick other pixels out of other areas that you estimated before. So that's called a stratified approach. Uh, and based on these three different approach or the other approach that you want to use, the amount of accuracy you estimate using these approach are going to be different. And be very careful with that. Uh, and in this example, we use the random points approach uh, because uh, in Google Earth Engine, to compute that accuracy is uh, not very complicated. And uh, so if you are using other approach, be sure to make sure uh, your accuracy uh, assessment is uh, valid uh, to your approach. So, uh, we construct these random points on line 75, then on line 78, we display these points on top of the NAEP image. Uh, and uh, we call these points as the reference uh, points there. And we label them in red color. And once these points are labeled on top of the image, we can go into the map and uh, similar to what, how we generate the training data in the supervised classification, we can click on those points to classify those points into the different classes uh, we want. So in this example, we simply uh, just generate the reference classes with the two that we had before, the vegetated and the non-vegetated uh, classes. So uh, just to show you quickly how this looks like, we're going to open up the map. And uh, as you can see, uh, the image that you're looking at is the uh, NAEP image, which is the uh, one meter pixel size. And uh, these 100 random points that were generated on top of these uh, NAEP image, as you can see on the screen, uh, it's shown in red color. And these are the different points that we wanted to construct a uh, reference data layer. Uh, and uh, so when we construct these reference data, uh, we simply go construct a data layer that is called the uh, vegetated reference, as you can see there. And the another layer that we come to construct is the other class, which is the non-vegetated uh, class. So here I've already saved the time for you to uh, simply constructed these uh, points already. So I just use the point drop place marker tool and I just drop these points and mimic what these random points are on top of the NAEP image. 
Uh, and uh, some of these areas, of it, obviously, you have to zoom in a bit to identify them. So, for example, this, this residential area, uh, it has a mixture of vegetated and non-vegetated land cover. So, uh, obviously, I have to zoom into this area uh, be able to be able to classify these points. So, once you have these two layers uh, of reference data, uh, we can construct and combine them into further analysis. So, uh, if we go back to the script here, on line 85, we continue with uh, constructing a data layer that is merging these two uh, reference layers, the, the vegetated and the non-vegetated uh, layer by using this uh, merge function, which you've seen before in the uh, supervised classification tutorial example. And then we do the very similar example. Uh, so from line 89 to 93, uh, this is how the computer is going to extract the pixel value of all of the points we just selected on the map or on the image to uh, have a better sense of how to classify these pixels. And ultimately, this pixel uh, collection or this collection of reference data is called uh, validated, which is what I'm highlighting on line 89 there. And after this uh, reference data is all constructed, on line 96, we uh, simply use this reference data to construct a uh, confusion matrix or error matrix uh, in this example. So where I'm highlighting on line 69, the error matrix, that is a function that you would want to use to construct a uh, matrix that simply tells us uh, both the type 1 and type 2 arrows of this classification. And uh, not to confuse you with fancy uh, statistical terms, type 1 and type 2 arrows is simply uh, translated to false positive and false negative examples. And in this case, we simply have two different classes uh, it is constructing a two by two uh, matrix, as you could imagine, uh, that shows us what is the false positive and what is the false negative uh, pixels that we are selecting. And that gives us a basis of how accurate our, our image is uh, classifying the data into. So then we print the results of these accuracy assessments, so on line 97 and uh, line 98. This is where we print the actual uh, arrow matrix accuracy values. So we use the, uh, we label it as the validation arrow matrix. So this is going to give us the actual matrix of the uh, confusion analysis. Uh, the confusion matrix result. And then uh, the second result we compute is the overall accuracy, uh, which is a uh, estimation based on the error matrix we just constructed. And we use this function uh, that I'm highlighting here that's called accuracy online 98. And this will give us a overall general accuracy of the uh, arrow matrix that we constructed. Uh, and obviously this is uh, a term that is used a lot in map accuracy assessment and you can read more in the literature uh, or any other guidebooks uh, that you can find uh, more details on these terms. Uh, but we're gonna just run this and show you quickly what this uh, result looks like. So after we run it, we're gonna go into the console area. So first in the console area, uh, you will see, as you can see on the screen there, first is the uh, valid 
gradation error matrix. So when you open up this by hitting this triangle, uh, you can simply just see uh, transformed matrix, as you can see, uh, it has the two by two uh, dimensions there. So uh, in order to interpolate this error matrix, uh, it's simply uh, what you're seeing is the uh, diagonal cells, so the 33 and the 36. So these means the, uh, the 33 means uh, what our reference data uh, tells it is a non-vegetated class, and the image is correctly classify uh, those 33 reference data into the uh, vegetated class. And then on the diagonal cell, we are seeing a 36. So this is all the reference points that the computer correctly classified into the uh, non-vegetated uh, land cover class. And on the opposite diagonal cells, you'll see two other values. So one is 28, and then the other is the two. So first we'll talk about the two, uh, which is uh, we told the computer uh, these reference points are, uh, should be vegetated land cover class, but the computer uh, falsely classified these points into uh, vegetated class. And uh, similarly, for the other pixel uh, uh, diagonal cell value that we saw, the uh, 28 sig signifies that the uh, reference points are uh, supposed to be vegetated class, but the computer wrongly classified into the uh, non-vegetated class. Uh, so this is a very fundamental example uh, of quantifying how accurate the classification uh, that we just performed. And then the other result uh, down below in the console is the overall accuracy as you, you are seeing there. Uh, and uh, we are seeing a value that is around 70%. So uh, this is the overall accuracy of our image classification. And this, in this specific example, we are using the supervised uh, image classification. Uh, and one thing to note that uh, the number that is computed inside this uh, Google Earth engine gives us a lot of decimal points. And when you are reporting this value, just be careful uh, that what the decimal point you want to report to uh, as a uh, common practice should be reported to the two decimal points behind uh, the digit. Uh, so uh, be careful with uh, reporting this term and interpolating it. So then uh, we can, the, uh, the code uh, that I wrote uh, simply ask us the question that uh, some of the accuracy is very low uh, and where are the area you think it is a creating problem uh, as you can see on the screen there and um, by th so in order to solve this problem we can increase the accuracy by uh, in general we can increase the accuracy by using higher resolution uh, imageries uh, because the computer then will be able to identify those pixels with much finer details. Uh, but in this example, let's just open up the map and we can see where the areas that the computer got confused with. So after I open the map here, we're gonna get rid of the reference point and reference image. And um, we can look at areas such as, for example, the nape uh, 
as I mentioned before, the residential areas such as uh, this area right here, uh, as you can see zoomed in on the screen there, there is a mix of uh, vegetated and non-vegetated land covers in that area. And it's very confusing for the computer to recognize if it's a 30 meter pixel. So right now you're looking at one meter, which is very detailed, but a 30 meter image, which is what we saw earlier, uh, this is just a blurb of different colors in there. Uh, and uh, it's very difficult for a computer to recognize that. So um, this is one example of how uh, the accuracy could drop is uh, where you find on the reference image, you identify these areas where the, pix the classes could be mixed and you uh, focus on these area and uh, you can simply uh, collect more samples in those areas. So let me just do a quick example. And let's get rid of the reference points real quick and we bring in the training examples. Okay, so in the training example, we uh, picked the, some of these points uh, that are non-vegetated and some of these points are vegetated in red. So we could drop more points in the vegetated area. So if we just zoom into this area, we can see some of these vegetations that stands out a little bit more. And then the uh, non-vegetated pixels, uh, they are much darker. So we can just uh, drop a few more points down here uh, to tell the computer better what we are dealing with. And then you can also see the, this is obviously a darker area that has uh, non-vegetated pixels uh, inside of it. And we can validate that by uh, simply looking at the reference image. So this is a huge uh, shopping center here. And uh, we can drop a few more points there so if we go back to the input image here, this is a Landsat image. We just drop a few more reference points down here. Uh, and now we are seeing uh, the non-vegetated points. We are seeing about 28. And then the number of vegetated training class is about 21. And uh, in general, I just want to quickly mention that uh, another good approach to increase the accuracy is to increase the number of training data sets. Uh, and uh, when you have more training data sets, you can be able to pick out more variations inside your image to uh, transfer that variation into the computer so the computer can pick out those uh, subtle changes uh, within pixels. So uh, this is a very quick example uh, to show you the various components associated with uh, assessing the accuracy of image classification. And obviously you can apply this to various uh, types of classifications, uh, not only just supervised classification we are showing here, but also unsupervised, uh, we showed in the last tutorial video, but uh, as well as uh, other approaches or other interpolations, uh, interpretations that we had showed in previous videos, such as the uh, grade level thresholding and uh, the uh, slicing different levels inside the image to classify different classes. Uh, and in the uh, next, next segment, we will get more into more advanced level things and we'll talk about uh, how we can modify the uh, user interface of the Google Earth Engine and hope to see you there. Thank you.